This is a video clip in the AEDT 1120U Foundations of Digital Teaching and Learning Technologies course and the title of this video clip is as follows Analog Computing to ENIAC. The analysis questions are number one according to the GIGO part three video clip what is the main value of using computers? Number two, what is artificial intelligence or AI and what are the implications of using AI? Number three, what is an analog computer and what were some of the uses of analog computers? Number four, what are some of the strengths and weaknesses of analog computers? In this final installment of the GIGO Garbage In, Garbage Out Computer History of British View series, I'd like you to notice that touchscreens and stylus or Style I were available in 1969. These were not recent creations, regardless of what uh, some corporations would like you to believe. Notice also that the video clip also emphasizes the removal of drudgery from human lives and, and assign the lower level tasks to computers, allowing humans to work on higher level cognitive tasks such as synthesis, evaluation, and creation. On another level, computers can also be programmed to remember their experiences and thereby learn, in quotes. Those who followed the exploits of Watson on the Jeopardy show this past year will have an exemplar of what artificial intelligence can do. Please take a look at GIGO, that is Garbage In, Garbage Out, Computer History of British View, Part 3, and the URL for this video clip is given on the screen and will be provided in the presentation file in Blackboard. There are also two other video clips that I'd like you to take a look at. Um, the following two short video clips provide short glimpses into two examples of different mainframe computers, the UNIVAC from 1956 and the IBM 7030 from 1956 to 1980. Um, so the URLs for those particular video clips are given. Um, they're both from YouTube and I invite you to take a look at both of those. The second one, just look at the first three minutes. Um, beyond that, it gets uh, to be a little bit, um, it, it, it reiterates some of the, the um, territory that we've already covered. And uh, take a look at the, video, the description that's given below the, vid, the video clip in YouTube itself. The following is quoted from Analog Computer article found on the Wikipedia site. The URL for this page can be found at the bottom of the slide. So, quote, an analog computer is a form of computer that uses the continuously changeable aspects of physical phenomenon, such as electrical, mechanical, or hydraulic quantities, to model the problem being solved. In contrast, digital computers represent varying quantities symbolically as their numeric uh, values change. Mechanical analog computers were very important in gunfire control in World War II, the Korean War, and as well as in the Vietnam War. They were made in significant numbers, these kinds of devices. The development of transistors made electronic analog computers very practical, and until digital computers had developed sufficiently, they continued to be commonly used in science and industry. Analog computers can have a wide variety of complexity, Slide rules and nomographs are the simplest, while naval gunfire control computers and large hybrid digital analog computers are among the most complicated. Analog computers are well situated to represent situations described by differential equations. Occasionally they were used when a differential equation proved very difficult to solve by traditional means. An electronic digital system uses two voltage levels to represent binary numbers. So this is the digital system. In many cases, the binary numbers are simply codes that correspond, for instance, to brightness of primary colors or letters of the alphabet or other symbols. The manipulation of these binary numbers is how digital computers work. The electronic analog computer, however, manipulates electrical voltages that are, poten are potential to the magnitudes of quantities in the problem being solved. Accuracy of an analog computer is limited by its computing elements as well as by the quality of the internal power and electrical interconnections. The precision of the analog computer readout is chiefly limited by the precision of the readout uh, equipment used, generally three or four significant figures. Precision of the digital computer is limited by word size, uh, arbitrary precision ar arithmetic, while relatively slow, uh, it provides 
and uh, uh, a practical degree of precision that might be needed. This is a list. Uh, what follows is a list on the screen of examples of early computation devices which are considered to be precursors of modern computers. Some of them uh, may have even been dubbed as computers by the press, although they fail to meet the modern definitions. So the anti Kyothera mechanism is believed to be among the earliest uh, mechanical analog computer. It was designed to calculate astronomical positions and was discovered in 1901 in the Antikythera wreck off the Greek island of Antikythera between Kythera and Crete and has been dated to circa 100 BC. The astrolabe was invented in the Hellenistic world in either the first or second centuries BC. It was capable of working out several different kinds of problems in spherical astronomy and it was used for determining geographic positions while sailing. The sector was a calculating instrument used for solving problems in proportion and trigonometry, multiplication and division, and for various functions such as squares and cube roots. It was developed in the late 16th century and found application in gunnery, surveying and navigation. The slide rule this is an interesting one. It was invented around 1620 or 1630. It was hand operated. It was a hand operated analog computer for doing multiplication and division. Additional scales uh, provided reciprocals, squares, square roots, cubes, cube roots, as well as transcendental uh, functions such as logarithms and exponentials, circular and hyperbolic trigonometry, and other functions. It was used in schools until approximately the 1970s. Um, I can remember that uh, when I got uh, to grade um, nine in uh, the early 1970s, the upper years, so grade 12s and grade 13s at that time, were still using slide rules. But by the time I got to the upper levels, um, the electronic calculators had completely replaced uh, the slide rule function and you couldn't find them anymore. Another example, the digital or differential analyzer which is a mechanical analog computer designed to solve differential equations by integration. It was invented in 1876 by James Thompson and extensions and enhancements were the basis of some parts of mechanical analog gunfire control computers. On the right hand column you will see several examples of analog computers which have been invented since the end of World War II in 1945 and I'll just list them at this point. The Fermiac Project Cyclone, Project Typhoon, the Moniac computer, direct analogy electric analog computer. There was a Heath kit, um, a kit based uh, computer called the EC1. And General Electric marketed an educational analog computer kit of a simple design in the early 1960s. Electronic analog computers were also created. This is all taken from Wikipedia, the analog computer page, and it's retrieved from the URL that is shown on slide presentation. Analog computers, so this is again a quote, use continuous physical properties for calculations. An analog magnetic tape, for example, manipulates magnetism to record sound. The magnetic imprint on the tape is a direct analog of the sound and is read back by a reader. An analog computer uses physical properties in the same way. Analog computers have been built using mechanical, hydraulic, optical, and electrical principles. An electric analog computer is different from a digital computer in what it uses the electricity for. Digital computers use electricity to create binary code, where an electric analog computer uses the properties of the electricity to replace the mechanical features of previous analog computer designs. For example, voltage is similar to water pressure and amps to total water flow, so these properties can be used to convert a hydraulic design into an electronic one. An e easy to understand example is the difference between how data is encoded on a CD and a vinyl record. The CD is digital, encoded with a pattern that simula simulates binary code, which is read by a laser and converted into useful data. The vinyl record is a direct analog of the data itself, in other words, um, the needle, the, the stylus that is put into the vinyl record um, sets up vibrations that are um, amplified by the electricity or by an amplifier and you end up getting sound as a result of that. That sound is then um, encoded directly 
um, in the form of vibrations onto the vinyl itself. And this is quoted from analog versus uh, analog computers versus digital computers, and the URL is given on the slide. Because analog computers do not have to encode and decode from binary and instead use the physical properties of electricity directly, the functions they can perform are done at a substantial sub uh, fraction of the speed of light and are therefore dramatically faster than what even the most powerful supercomputer is capable of. Calculations that are very difficult for a digital computer can be done with great speed by an electric analog computer. However, there are some weaknesses that come along with analog computers as well. The problems with analog computers stem from the same electrical phenomenon upon which the computer is based. Just as a digital computer is slower because it has to work in and out of binary code to accomplish anything, analog computers are subject to electrical problems and limitations such as noise, uh, the noise floor of its signals, the finite nature of its electronic, uh, the electron's charge, microelectronic parasitic effects, temperature issues, and non-linearities. It is simple, simplest to look at electric analog computing as an improvement on past analog forms, but still suffers from pre uh, the problems analogous to hydraulic and mechanical computing. While the digital model overwhelmingly dominates computing today, analogs remain a research curiosity precisely because, in theory, they are much faster at particular tasks. Both Indiana University and Harvard University continue to research analog computing applications. And again, this is quoted from Analog Computers versus Digital Computers, and the URL is given on the screen. This page is a repeat from the previous video clip and provide links, will provide links to another series that looks at mainframe computer development from another perspective. The synthesis questions for this particular video clip are as follows. Number one, should educators ban devices like slide rules and calculators from math classes? What are the pros and cons of this type of move? Number two, there seem to be several advantages to using analog computers. Why has much of the attention turned to digital computers? And three, quantitative aspects of the world seem to be preferred by some, while others gravitate to qualitative factors. What is the relationship between quantitative, qualitative, and digital analog perspectives? And this brings us to the end of the synthesis questions and this video clip.